So A24's lamb. Shit! Yeah. A couple in rural Iceland makes an alarming discovery one day in their sheep barn, and they soon face the consequences of defying the will of nature. Okay, so this is going to seem like a spoiler, but it's the entire premise for the film, and it was shown in the trailer. There's a farming couple who discover that one of their sheep gives birth to an offspring that's a hybrid of a human and a sheep. This is a beautiful film to look at. The setting is a farm located somewhere in Iceland in a green valley that's surrounded by mountains and a river. There is mist, rain, snow, and even during a large portion of this, a sky that never quite reaches night. And from the outset of this, there is a sense of foreboding and even low-level dread. But the funny thing is that it's just the feeling we get. I mean, there's nothing really to suggest anything bad coming. And the sound design works to enhance the uneasy feeling as we hear chuffing and labored breathing from an unseen being, and then it's coupled with the bleeding of the sheep and the blowing wind. And this just makes everything unsettled. And when we meet our couple, there's a sadness that emanates from them, but it's unspoken. I mean, it's again just a feeling that we get. This is a very slow burn of a story. There's actually very little dialogue, and I don't think that there were any words spoken by the characters for like the first 15 minutes of the movie. And then when they do speak, the words are used judiciously. It's like the story is savoring every syllable, just eking out only what's necessary and not wanting to waste words on needless exposition. Now, I really enjoyed the cyclical nature of the story. While it's a semi-depressing story arc, the parallels that are present not only foreshadow, but also provide a sick sense of justice as they complete the story cycle. I loved how this explores the theme of grief. While we don't watch the couple go through every stage, we meet them in what seems to be the depression stage moving into that acceptance stage. But I also love that the movie doesn't sit in that grief. While this has an overarching sense of dread, there's also a happiness that does begin to emerge. I think the graphical effects in this are going to have a varying effect on viewers. Now, some people in the audience of my showing laughed out loud the moment that the lamb was fully shown. Now, I didn't find it funny or even humorous, but I can see how it can cause an uneasiness. And the only way to deal with those uncertain feelings is through laughter. The graphics are crafted well, and they look like practical effects, but they could also be CGI. So either way, though, they are convincing. And this having to do with livestock, the film does give some of its focus to the sheep on the farm. And there are several different emotions that are conveyed through their eyes, which had a surprisingly emotional impact on me. I think it also helped that the lamb and some of the sheep resembled my dog Buddy. And even if they didn't, there is this softness and longing that is captured in their expressions. There's also a fierceness displayed that comes into play at certain points too. Now the softness and innocence in the eyes of the sheep contrast well with the harshness of the landscapes and even the foreboding atmosphere that permeates the scenes. And this is yet just another way that the film creates anxiety. Now, this is described by A24 as a dark folktale, and being such, there is a level of weirdness that's present. There are portions that feel dreamlike, and those are helped along by the environmental mist and fog, and it adds this ghostly feeling that just enhances the dread that I'd mentioned. The cinematography is stunning and almost entrancing in the way that the camera captures the landscapes. Now, I love the sense of isolation and separation we get from just several of the extremely wide shots, and they show how small a character actually is within all of that scenery. I also really enjoyed, though, how the camera would sit on a setting for an extra few moments after a character had left the scene. It just allowed us to sit with what we had just witnessed, or even let us ponder what's coming next. There are more than a couple of moments also where I found myself on the edge of my seat with anticipation or even worry. And the way the scenes are crafted leads us down this path that is sometimes seemingly obvious, and other times the outcome is just completely unexpected. Now, the film takes an hour and 46 minutes to lead us through the story, and like I've said, it is a very slow burn. I do think that the intensity builds as the narrative progresses, but don't go into this thinking that it's going to have all kinds of thrills and energy. But there is a driving nature to what's occurring. It's building suspense from one scene to the next. And what I really liked was that I was never really sure of what that next scene would contain. My assumptions and expectations were routinely subverted, which then made me appreciate the story even more. I do think the slowness of this may not work for everyone, because even when there is a payoff, it's not a massively exciting one. I mean, the climax fits well with all of the buildup, but it's not some high-energy conclusion. I did like how the story answers the questions, but it does create some additional questions. And the final shot is fittingly haunting. It speaks once again to the cyclical nature of the story. And like most tales, it's not an altogether happy ending. 
Something this has going for it is that it's not in an easily categorized genre. I mean, there are fantastical elements, and there's certainly dramatic overtones, and there's even a horror aspect that all work together to make this just this amalgamation that works. I think this also helps to give the movie a good level of complexity that's going to mess with your emotions and leave you a bit uncertain of where you land on it. But that complexity is also what helps to make this stand apart from other movies. It's layered with emotions and can even cause inner turmoil as just everything is processed. And what seemingly makes sense and like a good decision at the outset could really be a selfish and cold choice. And if you believe the characters, some choices are about happiness. I can see this causing very mixed feelings that will morph as you dissect and digest the meanings. And actually my score went up the longer that I sat with this. So overall, Lamb is a beautifully crafted tale of grief and acceptance. The cinematography is wonderfully executed and the slow burn of the story allows it to suck us into the narrative, building to a fantastical climax. While this movie could be polarizing because of the story and execution, I found the cyclical nature of the storytelling to be incredibly engaging and filled with just dreadful tension that kept me fully engulfed in the characters and their tale. There is sex, nudity, some profanity, and some brutal violence. I give Lamb four and a half out of five couches. So what's an offbeat or maybe weird movie that you've watched recently? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.